come back down when the parachutes are deployed. So when you hear those, it's usually the crew giving the call out and the ground echoing it. That just indicates we are moving farther and farther away from the launch pad, and so if a contingency arose, different sequences would be performed in the Dragon flight computer. Right now, we're just 90 seconds away from the start of propellant loading. We're at T-minus 36 minutes, 26 seconds. Everything continues to look good for Crew Dragon's fourth launch with people. Today, the first all-civil mission to low Earth orbit. Now, we should hear a call out right at T-minus 35 minutes when propellant load begins. Propellant loading will start on the first stage with liquid oxygen and RP-1 kerosene fuel. We'll also begin loading kerosene fuel on the second stage. And it'll take us uh, a little bit uh, deeper into the countdown before we put liquid oxygen onto the second stage. And everything wraps up inside the last 10 minutes with the very last propellant finishing up at just T minus two minutes. So there on your screen is the Falcon 9 rocket at pad 39A, and at the very top is the Crew Dragon capsule where the Inspiration4 crew awaits liftoff in just about 35 minutes. Again, if you're just joining us, this is the first all-civilian mission to orbit, aka these are non-professional astronauts. They're people like you and me that are uh, they're going to be going up to 575 kilometers and they're going to be orbiting Earth there at that altitude for three whole days. Uh, so you can hear uh, the voices in the background here that uh, are getting a little louder. The excitement in the building here at SpaceX headquarters is certainly growing. Propellant load has started. Especially with that call right there. <laughs> We're inside T minus 35 minutes. We are right on time. Propellant load start call out has begun. The fill and drain valves for the first and second stage uh, fuel tanks and the first stage liquid oxygen tank uh, now coming open, ground system pumps beginning to push the propellant into the Falcon 9. As we said, that'll continue all the way down to T minus two minutes. We'll hear call outs and bring status as we go through the countdown. But currently, everything looking good at pad 39A for the launch of the Inspiration 4 crew in just over 34 minutes. Our crews, uh, like Kate mentioned, are at the top of the vehicle sitting inside of the Dragon capsule. Um, Jared, Cyan, Haley, and Chris have been training for this journey pretty much ever since the announcement that they had all been selected as crewmates for the Inspiration4 mission in March. Uh, what's super cool is that they are going through the same exact Dragon training as our NASA astronauts. In order to get to visit low Earth orbit, our teams at SpaceX have spent uh, hundreds of hours teaching the crew about orbital mechanics, how to live in space and microgravity, and even running simulations of what a full mission would look like while seated inside of Dragon. Yeah, the Inspiration4 crew has completed numerous simulations, including a 30-hour and 12-hour end-to-end simulation in our Dragon trainers. They trained not only at SpaceX, but they also did a few other trainings, centrifuge training, they flew some fighter jets uh, together, did some aerobatics uh, in these jets, some flips, and experienced some, some real Gs before this mission today. Yeah, they even um, got to pilot uh, the jets themselves, yeah. which was super <laughs> yeah, cool to the see. <laughs> they also they completed a zero G flight, which you can see them there, uh, almost like superheroes. <laughs> they even climbed Mount Rainier in Washington, which looks like a very difficult hike. Yes, I think during the docu series, it was almost a whiteout condition, but they kept trekking along. Um, it was uh, almost 10 hours of hiking. Uh, 4,000 plus feet elevation, one of the serious hikes um, that you can do up in Washington. Yeah, some great team building, and they even signed a, their Falcon 9 booster that is sitting on the pad, and that is them with their signatures on the vehicle that they will be lifting off in in just over 30 minutes from now. This team has studied nearly 100 different training lessons covering all aspects of the mission. At the end of training each week, the crew recorded video diaries of their experiences. In their own words, here's the crew talking about their various training over the last six months. Jared Isaacman here, Commander Inspiration 4, and uh, we're like 
four months and a day away from our intended launch date. This week was really intense because we had a lot of the systems. We got to go into the sim. Going through some CRM training and looking at what the mission overview is going to look like. Talk a lot about teamwork and the SpaceX culture. Week two of training at SpaceX complete. Uh, this was a heavy week. I just completed another week at SpaceX and it was intense. A lot of good building blocks. Um, so you start in the beginning of the week with smaller things like losing comms to, okay, cir some circumstances are, are, are not so good and then some get really bad where you have to you know, plan an emergency deorbit, which we, we initiate ourselves in that. But man, challenging. I didn't realize how much of a body strength I need. So I need to hit the gym the next couple of months and build up some more muscles. Today was my favorite day of training because today was the medical training day. Learn some more about some of the medical experiments we're going to be working with and uh, helping to advance what we know about humans in spaceflight. We've all uh, contributed all sorts of fluids now uh, to the, the greater scientific cause. But the best part is we all got in our spacesuits together. We got to wear spacesuits, strap into the, the simulator and feel like you're actually going to space. Hello again, Chris here, and it's uh, August 2nd, 2021, 44, di 44 days from our launch in September, if uh, everything keeps going to plan, and uh, it's been an incredible week last week, uh, working with SpaceX teams down at Kennedy Space Center, and then uh, back here in Hawthorne this week for some sims. The spacesuit that I got fitted for about seven months ago, I actually get to see and try on and do a bunch of move maneuvers in to make sure that it's comfortable and that I can move. And I am just so excited for this because, I mean, this is the spacesuit I'm gonna wear leaving the planet. I'm just so honored and thankful and grateful to be a part of this historic mission and a part of the SpaceX team. Y'all are working so hard to get to Mars and beyond, we want to provide great data and we're really excited to be part of this. All right, well, thanks everybody for a fantastic time here in Hawthorne and we're also down at Kennedy. We've been doing some training down there as well. So I uh, really appreciate everything you guys been doing. This is my, my final call here from, uh, from SpaceX. So we're signing off. So incredible to get an inside look to their training. Only 553 humans have reached, uh, have been to orbit, and most of those traveled as part of government or country specific missions. As a result, the research conducted on those missions, particularly as it relates to humans in space, is often only accessible by the country or government that conducted the research. Think about the possibilities if the data from all those missions could be made available to the broader science community for research. Inspiration4 is a step in that direction. The crew of Inspiration4 will conduct research in orbit that has the potential to improve human health here on Earth and for future space explorers. One of the cool things about this mission is that all biomedical data collected during the mission, things like heart rhythm and rate, blood oxygen saturation, among other things, will be accessible for research. And to that end, SpaceX and the Inspiration4 crew are partnering with Trish the Translational Research Institute for Space Health to collect data and biological samples from the crew before, during, and after this historic space flight. Part of NASA's human research program, TRISH is a virtual institute that finds and funds disruptive science and medical technology in order to reduce health and performance risks in space explorers. Yeah, we saw uh, Kate with uh, Diana earlier putting on some really uh, colorful sunglasses. Um, <laughs> they're not really sunglasses, but um, it was an experiment about um, how do we understand motion sickness and sort of the ups and downs in, in space. That is something I'm super excited about because I get a lot of motion sickness here, and so I'm hoping <laughs> that it helps a lot of people. To see firsthand uh, some of the equipment that the crew has in their cargo hold. Um, like we've said before, um, this is a science mission in addition to a, you know, it's a, a three day science mission basically. And um, one of the other things that Diana showed us was the uh, ultrasound reader. 
and uh, how the intracranial fluid changes while you're in space. So lack of gravity essentially means that instead of the fluids in your body being concentrated towards your feet, um, they kind of re or they equalize towards your head, which can affect vision. Uh, and they are planning to use that uh, ultrasound reader, which they, they just plug right into an iPad to do readings live inside Crew uh, Dragon of their eyeballs while they're in space for three days. That was so cool to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in addition to all the awesome signs going up on today's mission, the Inspiration4 team is also using this mission to bring awareness and help fundraise for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. The Children's Research Hospital opened in Memphis, Tennessee in 1962 and ever since has been committed to finding cures for kids with cancer and other life-threatening diseases regardless of their socioeconomic status, race, belief, belief, or ethnicity. St. Jude has invented treatments that help to push the overall childhood cancer survival rate from 20% to more than 80% in the United States. In developing countries, that number is unfortunately not that high, uh, with fewer than one in five children with cancer surviving. St. Jude has a bold mission to change that. The Inspiration4 mission is part of an ambitious fundraising goal to give hope to all kids with cancer and other life-threatening diseases. The goal is to raise $200 million for St. Jude. Jared already committed $100 million. Jared already committed $100 million of his own money and the team has raised about $30 million so far, but we still have a ways to go. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll notice that there's a donation button where you can make your own contribution. Any amount, big or small, makes a big difference and it's super easy to do. So go ahead and click the donate button and give what you can to help save a child's life. Beyond the good, this mission will do for science and childhood cancer. This mission is also exciting because it's the debut of the new dragon cupola. I think we have some footages here of the cupola. Um, it is gonna be the largest uh, continuous window in space ever by a factor of two and has over 2,000 square inches of viewing area. Yeah, and there's a lot that went into the design for this. Um, you know, this is going to uh, outer space, so it needs to be uh, designed and tested for, you know, all the loads that it will see while it's out in space. It's a great view to look out of, but it also needs to act as a fully functioning uh, portion of the spacecraft. Yeah, we were talking about reusability earlier, and this capsule uh, is being used for the second time on this mission. It previously supported the Crew-1 mission uh, in November of last year, but this cupola is brand new uh, to this capsule, brand new to SpaceX, and we're debuting it on this mission, and it is uh, there's a view of it there in an anechoic chamber, um, and it's just incredible that uh, we're, there, we're basically going to have 360 views of space um, from, from the uh, forward hatch there uh, of the Crew Dragon capsule. And this is an animation uh, showing how uh, its position in Crew Dragon is a little different. So Crew Dragon used to dock autonomously, or does dock autonomously to the International Space Station, uh, that port there being underneath the nose cone. And that has, was removed uh, and for this mission is now replaced by the cupola as we just saw. So super cool new piece yeah. of hardware that I am, I'm so stoked to see launch here. As we await T-Zero in about 23 minutes, the ground operations teams are doing a series of system checks to make sure both Dragon and Falcon 9 are ready for launch. Let's take a look at what the ascent portion of the mission will look like. Once we hit T-Zero, we will watch Falcon 9 and Dragon lift off from historic launch pad 39A and make their ascent. At about 50 seconds into flight, Falcon 9's engines will throttle down to help pass through the period of maximum dynamic pressure on the rocket, or what we typically refer to as Max-Q. And it's worth noting that once we hit Max-Q, the vehicle will be going supersonic. Once we are through the period of maximum dynamic pressure, we can throttle up our Merlin engines again. From here, uh, there are about two, we are about two and a half minutes into flight and we have a series of three events that happen in rapid succession. First is MECO or, en or main engine cutoff. This is where all nine Merlin engines shut off in preparation for, set for stage separation. 
stage separation is where the first stage detaches from the second stage, with the first stage making its way back to Earth for landing as the second stage continues on its journey with the third event. Which is SCS-1 or second engine start one, and that is where the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage lights up and propels the second stage along with our Inspiration4 crew to orbit. As stage two heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to make its way back to Earth. The first is the entry burn, which is where three of those nine Merlin 1D engines will reignite and then shut down. And that'll help slow the stage down in preparation for entry back into the Earth's atmosphere. While the first stage is heading back to Earth, the second stage will cut off its one Merlin engine that was, was ignited right after stage separation. <laughs> Once this happens, we will wait for confirmation of a good orbital insertion. About 90 seconds after Dragon gets into orbit, Falcon 9 will land back on Earth. The landing burn, a single engine burn, will bring the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship about nine and a half minutes into the mission. While Falcon 9 first stage is landing, Dragon is preparing to separate from the second stage. At about three minutes after the second stage gets into orbit, we should have a great view of Dragon with its four-person crew drifting away from the second stage. Once Dragon is a short distance away, it will begin checking out its Draco maneuvering thrust thrusters to make sure Dragon continues to increase separation distance from the second stage. <laughs> uh, it's getting very exciting here in Hawthorne. Uh, the nose cone deploy sequence will initiate just before T plus 12 minutes and end around the T plus 15 minute mark. Uh, we do expect to see our first glimpse of the Dragon Cupola in outer space at this time. We've just heard it. T minus 20 minutes, five seconds counting. Stage two fuel load is complete. Now we're under 20 minutes to lift off. Been a wonderful day for today's Inspiration4 mission. The first all civilian mission to space. And if you joined us earlier in the broadcast, we had a pretty important question for the Inspiration4 crew that remains unresolved. For those of you who missed that, here's your chance to weigh in. If I had to choose between Star Wars, Star Trek, and then one of my other favorites is Stargate, SG-1, um, I would rather trek across the universe than fight my way. I, I've heard, are you a Star Wars guy? Are you a Star Trek guy? Um, those used to be true. I really think I'm a Battlestar Galactica guy, to be honest. There's no question it's Star Wars. Um, like, I'm a, I'm a Star Wars fan, uh, for sure. I would say that, if I had to guess, it's a split crew between Star Wars and Star Trek. Um, I don't know if anyone else would have dropped Battlestar Galactica. I don't know on that one. Can't beat Captain Adama. I think Jared is Star Wars. Cyan is Star Wars. Chris is a wild card, but I think he's Star Wars. Oh, uh, J uh, Jared is definitely Star Wars. Um, I think Chris is probably Star Trek, but I'm not 100% sure. And I would think that Haley, she's the youngest. So I think maybe Star Wars. I think Star Trek is too um, old for her. Oh, I'm Star Trek all the way. I wanted to be Bones. I kind of am a medical officer, so. I don't know if we're like completely unified around that. I mean, there is other, you know, sci-fi, you know, spacey stuff that, uh, that comes before Star Trek. Um, okay. They don't know they're wrong. Like that just, <laughs> they'll learn that over time. Like. <laughs> I like Jared's last little comment there. They don't know they're wrong. Mm. When you're the commander of the mission, I wonder what your vote counts. <laughs> Just under T minus 18 minutes, everything continues to go well. We're getting ready to start locks loading on the second stage. That'll bring us another step closer to launch at 8.02.56 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Falcon 9 is going to take Dragon into its orbit of about 190 by 575 kilometers. Shortly after that, we will raise Dragon's orbit to 575 kilometers in a circular orbit higher than the space station, higher than the space telescope. For three days, a series of amazing views that Jared and the team should have looking through the windows and the cupola up there on the Inspiration4 Dragon.
This crew will see about 15 orbits a day at this altitude. Uh, they'll get to experience uh, 15 sunrises and 15 sunsets, which should be pretty incredible. And just as a comparison, um, John mentioned the International Space Station is going to be a little bit lower than where this crew is going to. Uh, because the International Space Station is closer, uh, it takes a little less time to orbit the Earth, so they see 16 orbits a day uh, relative to what this Inspiration4 crew will see will be 15 orbits a day. I do want to comment on what we're seeing on screen. This is the Falcon 9 rocket. Rock load has started. That was called for stage two liquid oxygen loading. Um, you, you can start to see some white clouds around Falcon 9. That is normal and expected for us at this stage in the countdown. We are topping off that super chilled liquid oxygen. And when it reaches the warmer ambient air temperatures of Florida, it starts to condense and form those clouds that you see. Now, if you notice that the second stage there is a slightly whiter uh, shade than the first stage, uh, that's because the first stage has been reused twice before. Um, it previously supported the GPS-34 and GPS-35 missions uh, back in 2020 and uh, 2021 of the, this year. So uh, that booster this is making its third flight today. Uh, the Dragon capsule is making its second flight. It previously flew on the NASA Crew-1 mission to the International Space Station. Uh, so that's why the second stage looks uh, a little different than the first stage there just underneath it. And if you're just now joining us, you are tuned in to the first all-civilian mission to orbit known as Inspiration4. Um, it's getting very exciting here. We're just a little over T minus 15 minutes from T0. Anna, we started co covering the action at T minus four hours uh, with the crew walking out uh, of Hangar X. They made their way over to the Falcon support building where they got suited up. And then we saw them hop in the Teslas, ride up to the pad, go up the fixed service structure and walk down that lit crew access arm that we see there connecting Falcon 9 uh, to the tower. And it just, it's hard to believe that we're now under 15 minutes yes. before launching the first all civilian mission to orbit. Uh, again, these are four non-professional astronauts. Uh, they're, they're people just like us. Uh, and they're gonna be going to space for three days. They're gonna be orbiting um, at orbiting Earth at 17,500 miles per hour. So they're basically going so fast that they won't fall back to Earth until we tell Dragon to do so. Um, and they're gonna be going up to a height of 575 kilometers. Yep, and at those speeds and at those altitudes, they're gonna be doing a tons of science, uh, which is super cool. And all of that data is gonna be available for uh, folks to um, uh, continue to push the boundaries of what human space exploration will be in their near future. That's a live view of Falcon 9 with Crew Dragon for the Inspiration 4 mission sitting on top. There we can see our four soon-to-be astronauts there comfortable in their seats. Um, throughout the day, we have seen a lot of camaraderie, a lot of joking, and I imagine that uh, they're now, things are starting to get a little more serious. They're really focusing in uh, on the task at hand, uh, which is going to space in just a little over 13 minutes. This is very exciting. Um, if you've been following along, they do have a Netflix documentary following their journey all the way up until this point. Um, and the crew has just been so incredible. It's been so amazing to watch them throughout um, this whole process and uh, very excited to see them strapped in their seats, ready to go. We're just inside T minus 13 minutes, counting down. Everything is still looking good for launch of Falcon 9 and Dragon at Eight hours, two minutes, 56 seconds Eastern Daylight Saving Time is coming up very shortly. Falcon 9 did begin propellant loading on time at T minus 35 minutes. Loading of the RP-1 kerosene fuel onto the second stage is complete. That closed out right on time. Fuel loading is continuing on the larger first stage tank. It's about half full right now. That'll finish at T minus six minutes. We ought to hear that call out on the webcast. We're continuing to load densified liquid oxygen onto the first stage and into the second stage tanks. 
Now the liquid oxygen load will wrap up at about T minus three minutes on first stage, T minus two minutes on the second stage. Now a reminder, now that we are into propellant loading, we cannot stop the countdown and try to launch later in the window. So if a problem arises that requires holding the countdown clock, those dreaded words, hold, 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 we don't wanna hear, we would have to scrub for the night and try again. We have a launch opportunity tomorrow, just a little bit later, uh, if conditions allow. Condition of the Falcon 9 being go, the range is go. Weather, we've had great cooperation uh, out of the Florida weather, both ground level, upper altitude, and around the world at the contingency landing sites. On the Dragon spacecraft, Dragon mission director and that team has reported no issues. They've done their communications checkouts. The crew access arm that you can see is retracted away from the Dragon spacecraft. We armed the launch escape system on time. And on the right-hand side of the monitor, you can see the four-person crew strapped in and they are ready to go. Coming up in about a minute, we're gonna get final instructions to the crew at T minus 10 minutes. They're gonna configure their crew displays for launch. And that's a setup that'll give the crew insight into how the launch is proceeding and it'll provide updates on vehicle health. Then we'll get a little closer at T minus five minutes. We'll be in the terminal count for the Dragon spacecraft. Dragon will go to internal power. We'll hear continued call outs on the countdown net as we get close to zero and a liftoff. Now next major event coming up right now, T minus 10 minutes, as I said, Dragon will get its final instructions. We will also Meant we will also do a final series of checks of Falcon 9 telemetry against a preset uh, limits, make sure that all systems are go, and then we'll be moving from there into the closeouts on propellant, chilling into the engines to get ready for engine ignition down at about T minus two seconds. Let's listen in on the countdown net for a minute. Dragon SpaceX, confirm crew displays are configured for launch. SpaceX Dragon, our displays are configured for launch. Copy that, Dragon. And it has been an absolute honor to prepare you for this historic flight. Today, you are truly inspiring the world. We wish you a great mission, good luck, Godspeed, and enjoy the ride. Okay, it looks like we passed through another event, the T-minus 10 minute call up to the crew to reconfigure. That final message from the ground team as they get ready to have Inspiration 4 team inspire the world. On the Falcon 9 side, we're doing the last T-minus minute, T-minus 10 minute checks. And the next major event coming up, I think you've got that event. Yeah, that was, I just wanna note that was um, SpaceX 4, which stands for the Crew Operations and Resource Engineer. Um, that was the voice of Sarah Gillis. Uh, and she is basically the primary resource to the crew. We can see some uh, excitement there on the right-hand side of your screen as the crew, uh, I think they're really starting to realize that they're, they're going to space in <laughs> under 10 minutes. Uh, now the next major event that we have coming up will occur at T minus seven minutes. You'll hear the call out for engine chill. Uh, engine chill is simply, as the name says, we chill down uh, some of the hardware in the engine. We're actually going to flow a little bit of the super chilled, uh, densified liquid oxygen uh, through the turbo pumps and allow that hardware to uh, basically come down, the temperature come down. This allows us to avoid any uh, thermal shock to the hardware when the full flow of super chilled liquid oxygen occurs uh, at startup. So they are on your screen. Dragon Resilience with the Inspiration 4 crew strapped in their seats there at the, the top of the rocket. Once again, if you're just joining us, this is the first all civilian mission to orbit, and they are going to space in seven and a half minutes. They will be ascending to an altitude of 575 kilometers above Earth and orbiting Earth at that altitude for three days. There's that crew there on your screen. On the far left seat is Chris Sembrowski, 
Next to him, Dr. Cyan Proctor, the pilot. Next to her to the right, Commander Jared Isaacman, and to the right of Jared Haley Arsenault, the medical officer. Stage one engine chill has started. All right, there's that call that stage one engine chill has started. We don't really have a good view, but right now at the base of the Falcon 9, the nine Merlin engines are beginning to vent a little bit of liquid oxygen overboard down into that flame bucket. As Kate says, that's chilling in the turbo pumps in preparation for going to high speed flow at T minus two seconds. Nice view on top of the fixed service structure looking down at Dragon. The transporter rector or strongback is currently still clamped onto the second stage right next to the vehicle. We'll see that retract starting about four and a half minutes before launch when the arms open up and then the strong back will recline away a couple of degrees. What we're Stage getting ready for load complete. right now is that call out. We're right on time. The fuel load, the RP-1 kerosene, refined petroleum one, rocket propellant one grade is loaded onto the first stage. So that leaves us with just liquid oxygen loading continuing on both first and second stage. And you can see that moist Florida air slowly breezing by the two chilled down uh, liquid oxygen tanks and you can see the mist coming off with the moisture the humidity and the air condenses and gives you those clouds yeah that super chilled liquid oxygen coming into contact with the ambient florida air uh, so creates these these puffs of white clouds as john said completely normal um, in fact we'll probably see we will be seeing more of those once lox load completes and uh, those lines are closed off to the vehicle. Now coming up in just about 10 seconds, uh, we should be hearing the call that Dragon um, has been transitioned to its terminal count configuration. Dragon has transitioned to configure for terminal count. Falcon 9 tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. Everything continuing to go on schedule. We're beginning to pressurize the tanks. That'll help stiffen the second stage up as the two hydraulic clamp arms will open up coming up here very shortly. Strong back is lowering. As you can see on the timeline there, at the bottom of your screen, the strong back retraction is the next major event. In fact, the last physical event or modification to the pad prior to liftoff. Falcon 9 is nearly fully loaded with almost 100, excuse me, 1 million pounds of liquid kerosene and liquid oxygen. And that liquid oxygen is what we see venting there, uh, those white clouds. All right, and there on your screen, you can see that the strong back is beginning to retract. And Kate, that strong back will move back just a couple of degrees you see here. Then at T0, when the Falcon 9 sends the liftoff command to the ground to release it, Hydraulics will bring that strong back the rest of the way to about a 45 degree position at liftoff. Stage one locks load complete. We've got the call out right on time. First stage liquid oxygen loading is complete. Shutting down the ground pumps. We're down to just loading Incoming second right stage to, uh, liquid yeah, oxygen. Yeah. And now under three minutes until the launch of inspiration four. Dragon has transitioned to terminal count and is on internal power. All right, and there's that call out that Dragon is now running on its own power. Um, it is no longer connected to the power systems of pad 39A. As you just heard, the crowd is super excited here at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, as we are now under two and a half minutes uh, until the launch of the Inspiration4 crew. That crew there can be seen on the right-hand side of your screen. 
buckled in and ready to go. Stage two locks load complete. And there's the call that stage two locks load is Dragon complete. Dragon is an auto idle. Falcon is now fully loaded with all of its propellants. Close out will begin shortly. Expect loud venting. Announcement to let the crew know that as we vent off various lines on the uh, launch pad, we'll hear some loud noises. Let the crew know that's planned. We're also right now draining the liquid oxygen out of the transporter erector, draining the lines, getting ready for launch. Waiting for the startup call at T minus one minute. Commander call it 30 down. Seconds. Punch it, SpaceX. T-minus 15 seconds. Pitching down range. Stage long propulsion is nominal. T plus 30 seconds. Call outs indicate nominal. Historic mission flame the Inspiration 4 crew. On board Dragon and Falcon N. Great deal with the crew in the council. We're into the throttle down, into the throttle bucket. Stage one throttle down. Throttling down in preparation for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Stage one throttle down. Stage two throttle down. Stage three throttle down. Stage four throttle down. Stage five throttle down. Stage six throttle down. Stage seven throttle down. Stage eight throttle down. Stage nine supersonic. Stage one throttle up. We're through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Copy, We're throttled one bravo. back up and one bravo, the call out from space. That's one of the abort sequences. That is a nominal call. Everything continues to be good. Looks like a smooth ride for the crew. We're passing through three G's acceleration. Everything continues to look nominal. Our okay, engines are throttling down for G limiting. Four G's, so we're holding it there for the crew. Major event coming up will be main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation. Looking at the second stage engine nozzle and an ignition of the second stage. And Miko. Stage separation confirmed. Stage 
Murphy. Officially, the Inspiration4 crew are now on their way to space. First stage booster there on the left-hand side of your screen is making its uh, way back down to Earth. The grid fins have popped out to assist with the steering. It will be making a landing attempt on our drone ship. Just read the instructions, uh, which is parked out uh, and holding position in the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, so we have a couple of views on Acquisition screen. Acquisition signal, Bermuda. Uh, as Kate mentioned, left-hand side is a view from the top of our first stage looking down. That has already separated from the second stage, and it's making its way back to Earth. The velocity of the first Dragon stage SpaceX trajectory nominal. is being tracked on the bottom left-hand side of your screen. On the right-hand side of your screen is a view of our second stage Merlin vacuum engine. On the opposite end of the, that engine is the second stage and the crew, which sits on top of the second stage. Everything looks to be going Normal, uh, <laughs> normally uh, with them, um, and you can also track the velocity on the second stage on the bottom right-hand side of your screen. And we also have awesome views of the crew inside of their capsule as well. I'm pretty sure during first stage ascent, I saw Dr. Okay, Sian Proctor. I'm pretty sure I saw Dr. Sian Proctor give us a two thumbs up. <laughs> yep. I'm sure she enjoyed this ride that she's been waiting for her entire life. Yes. Uh, one notable thing, too, is we're getting some twilight views. Um, the sun just set in Florida, but we're high enough um, uh, up where uh, the light around the horizon is also reflecting off of very high altitude objects, such as the first and second stages. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Love to hear that call out, trajectory nominal from the guy who's up there. Also notice we're Really up there now, well past 100 kilometers. Acquisition of signal, New Hampshire. Just before that view switched, we saw some uh, teammate fist bumps going on there inside <laughs> of the cabin. <laughs> yeah, they look like they're having a fun ride there. Um, and their journey isn't over. We've got about seven more minutes until uh, Dragon separates from the second stage. Yes, uh, next milestone for this mission is actually going to be happening on the first stage. Um, it's going to be performing a re-entry burn that's going to be coming up around the T plus seven minute and um, 30 second mark. Uh, that burn is used to slow down the first stage before it re-enters the denser parts of the atmosphere. Um, a few minutes later, it will execute a landing burn and make an attempt to land on our drone ship that's currently parked in the Atlantic Ocean. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Copies. So Brothers, far, sorry. I'm just going to say so far everything looking great for the Inspiration4 crew, hearing that everything is proceeding nominally there with the second stage, which is what you see on the right hand side. That it, propulsion nominal. I was just going to say that MVAC engine uh, we just heard now is looking nominal. About a minute left to go before the first stage performs its uh, first burn. And on your left-hand side, looking at the first stage, you may see uh, those white puffs. Um, those are the nitrogen puffs uh, helping to steer and guide uh, the vehicle, basically. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Basically is the attitude control. For the vehicle as it makes its way back down to earth there's the crew on the right hand side of your screen i think i see some more <laughs> thumbs up there <laughs> dr proctor is clearly excited that she's finally in space uh, again this mission will be orbiting earth for three days uh, and they will be at an altitude of 575 kilometers which if i remember correctly john i you said that that is the distance from los angeles to the golden gate bridge there you go <laughs> They're going to get there a lot faster. <laughs> Phase two, FTS is saved. Right now. So, what you're seeing on screen on the left hand side is 
the entry burns, the first of two burns on the first stage. Uh, again, this first stage has already separated from the second stage. So stage the first stage burn, is uh, making its way back to Earth, trying to land, and the second stage, everything is going well. It is headed into orbit with the crew on board. Actually, there on your screen, uh, you can see a sunrise horizon there uh, with planet Earth uh, just behind the glowing MVAC engine. Stage two is in terminal guidance. Call out stage two in terminal guidance. Uh, we're at the altitude. We're working the angular momentum we need to get into the right orbit. And if you're wondering, crew's pulling about three and a half Gs right now, less than they took on the first stage flight. So in about 15 seconds, we are Jeez. expecting Copy the Shannon. We are expecting down. the MVAC to throttle down and to cut off an event called second engine cutoff, and then we'll wait for the confirmation of, of good orbit. At the same time, the first stage uh, will be uh, beginning its landing burn. And here we have the MVAC. We just saw that it um, shut off its it. engine. Stage one, landing burn is still up. Dragon SpaceX, <laughs> All right, good news there. Nominal orbit insertion. That's amazing news for Inspiration 4 crew. Uh, here we'll begin opening that oh excuse me in a few minutes here we'll separate from the second stage and then shortly after that we'll begin opening that nose cone uh, at the same time we landed our first stage on the drone ship as which is super exciting as if the second stage action wasn't exciting enough right. <laughs> So there's that MVAC engine, like we mentioned before, it has already shut down uh, in an event known as second engine cutoff. And the crew are now gliding, if you will. Now one thing right now is we're coming up uh, just uh, under 11 minutes in the flight. We're waiting another minute and a half or so before we get into uh, the separation sequence. We're, the second stage is going through a series of events where we make sure that Gases are all pushed out of the system. There aren't any what they call disturbance torques. We want to make sure that the second stage is very stable. It's quiet. It's not moving around. It's not doing anything. So we give it a few minutes to actually just vent everything down, then go into quiet mode. Then Dragon will send the command to separate itself from the Falcon 9. It'll be pushed away. Falcon 9 stays in orbit for a while till it eventually comes back to Earth. And then Dragon moves on its way. Yeah, John, you talked about the, the terminal count earlier um, today, and this is almost similar to that. It's like another check before the next thing, before the next event that happens. The beauty of the countdown. <laughs> okay, we're about 30 seconds away from uh, separation of Dragon from the second stage. The view on the left-hand side of the screen is a view of the unpressurized section of Dragon. So it's the sort of back end, the trunk section of the Dragon. So when we do see separation, We'll see that kind of push away from the second stage and uh, make its way into orbit. Once again, the Inspiration4 has lifted off from pad 39A. Um, they are now in orbit uh, around Earth and we're we take a great ride of it, enjoy your time on of it, and we look forward to flying again with SpaceX. And copy that, Gers. We really appreciate everyone's help back in um, LCC. That was the voice of SpaceX Chief Engineer, Chief Engineer Bill Gersten-Mayer communicating with 
Inspiration for Commander Jared Isaacman. So Dragon has separated away from the second stage, and that's the view that we have on the left-hand side of your screen. A lot of space there. <laughs> uh, and uh, the, the next... And, New Hampshire. and then the next event that we uh, are anticipating is the opening. Dragon SpaceX, nominal dehumidifier activation and service section Draco checkouts. We're going to open up that news card. Third to call out, nominal Draco checkouts after separation. And there's that first view that we have over the shoulders of uh, Commander Jared Isaacman and pilot Cyan Proctor. Uh, Dr. Cyan Proctor is on the right-hand side and uh, Jared is on the left-hand side. And this is uh, their dashboard for the next three days. These touch screens provide them all of the telemetry and data and information and, um, about the systems on board Dragon. Uh, that they can interact with while on orbit. Oh, we can see the <laughs> zero G <laughs> interpreter floating is. around. <laughs> and it looks like it is a little golden retriever. <laughs> oh, like the golden retriever uh, assistance dogs at St. Jude yeah. Children's yeah. Hospital. That is apropos. Oh, I love it. Fifth crew member on board with the Inspiration Four crew. <laughs> so in a few seconds here, we are expecting the nose cone to open up and hopefully we'll be able to see uh, the first views of the Dragon Cupola in space. There we can see that they have just opened up their visors. And there is a forward hatch uh, inside of Dragon uh, between the cupola and the crew. Uh, so when the nose cone does deploy, um, they won't immediately get to see out the cupola. But once they can get out of their seats, uh, open up that hatch, they'll get some incredible views of space. And on your right-hand screen is Mission Control Hawthorne uh, at SpaceX headquarters here. Once again, the cupola uh, is the observation dome that was installed. It's brand new hardware to this mission. Uh, it is in place of what was the, uh, the docking adapter, um, or excuse me, the docking mechanism that allowed Crew Dragon to previously dock with the International Space Station. Uh, due to the fact that the space station is not our destination today, we were able to pull out that docking mechanism and insert the cupola, um, which will basically provide a 360 view of space for our passengers inside uh, Crew Dragon Resilience here, which I cannot wait for our first views of the cupola. You know, everything that we've seen on the ground here, is just incredible. And, uh, you know, to see it actually in action, um, with those 360 views is going to be breathtaking for us. I can't even imagine what uh, what it might be like to, to actually experience it in person. Yeah, this is going to be incredible. Um, and I, I can't wait for them to get the first look out and and hopefully we'll... Lots of signal in the ground. Hopefully we'll get to see some of their reactions when they first look out that window. Yeah, so if you are just joining us, this is the Inspiration4 mission, the first all-civilian all crew into space. Um, the team um, had a nominal ascent out of Pad 39A in Kennedy Space Center and are currently in orbit around the Earth. Yeah, what an incredible place to be in right now when we can say we have now put four civilians into space, into orbit. Um, it's been an incredible journey for us to get here. Um, you know, we didn't do this alone. There's a lot of history working with our partners, NASA, um, to, to get us to this point. A lot of um, efforts with reusability and reflying vehicles, which we've seen on this mission particularly. Um, we've reflown the booster 
three times. Dragon, we flew uh, for uh, a second time here. First flew on crew one last year. And now <laughs> Jared, Cyan, Chris, uh, and Haley are out in space. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible. Uh, just the, the fact that um, these are normal, regular people, um, non-professional astronauts, uh, and they're now in space. And Acquisition it's, signal okay here. Uh, and it's just wonderful to know that the access to space have, has opened up. Um, I believe in the note that Jared relayed back to ground. Uh, he said that the door is wide open and the view is spectacular. Uh, so, um, and of course, they can't quite see out through the dome just yet, as we mentioned before. Uh, but um, metaphorically, it, it's, it must be an incredible feeling to be on board uh, Crew Dragon at this moment. I bet everyone's super jealous of Haley and her window seat right uh, now. Right. She can just turn to her left and see <laughs> everything. Chris, Chris, Chris also has one, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of window seats, uh, we are approaching the uh, coast of Ireland. We're 249 kilometers up, so we're heading from the 200 kilometers uh, where we injected to 575, and then we'll begin circularizing the orbit. But more importantly, we got into contact with the ground station in England, and they confirmed the nose cone is open. Amazing. So another major <laughs> event, the hooks that hold it down have opened up, and then the nose cone deploys itself up on its actuator. So that exposes the cupola, and we're going to see if we might get any kind of uh, view here before we sign off. Yeah. Awesome. And as you mentioned, uh, we, we aren't going to the International Space Station. We're actually just going out into space, into orbit. Um, so they will be doing uh, a couple burns. Uh, another one will be, or the first one will be uh, 45 minutes into flight and then another 90 minutes into flight. And that'll take them to their final orbit of 575 kilometers away from Earth. <laughs> So uh, at this point, it, it sounds like we're actually not going to be able to get uh, views of the nose cone opening and of that cupola. So unfortunately, we won't be able to bring that to you live at the moment. Uh, however, we will be providing uh, that footage once it becomes available. And uh, the four of us are super excited uh, to see what our four Inspiration4 four astronauts are going to be seeing over the next three days. Uh, so at this point, Jared, Haley, Chris, and Cyan are now officially in orbit. Over the next 45 minutes, they'll reach their cruising orbit and spend the next three days orbiting planet Earth. We'll be checking in periodically with the crew to see how they're enjoying their first trip to orbit and to check in on those 360 views of space. <laughs> Uh, if you are curious and want to know where Dragon is at orbiting the Earth, keep tabs on the mission with the Follow Dragon tracker on SpaceX.com. Yeah, and stay on top of any potential live events that we might be able to have with the crew while they're out in orbit uh, by following us on social. And finally for today, the thank yous. Kennedy Space Center, the Eastern Range for the support getting us through the countdown, the FAA for launch approval, and of course, the Inspiration4 crew for their confidence in SpaceX, getting them into space today. And finally, thank you to everyone who has logged in to watch our webcast and donated to the St. Jude Children's Hospital. With that, we wish you a good day.